What's up everybody? My name is Eric. Welcome to my channel, Eric the Tutor. What's up everybody? My name is Eric. Welcome to my channel, Eric the Tutor. Today we're going to be going over some Chem 118B practice problems and we're going to be going over E2 reactions. So I have three examples on the board and we're going to walk through them together. So if you want, you can try these at home. Um, go ahead and pause the video, give them a try, and then unpause it and we'll talk it through together, okay? Let's go ahead and get started. So this first one here, do you think this group is going to be bulky or not bulky? Well, if we look comparing this one versus these two examples, we can see that this group here is going to be much bulkier than the groups down here. So I'm going to write that this is a big, bulky base. So because it's big and bulky, when my oxygen wants to go and attack a hydrogen, it's going to want to go for one that's not near any groups that are coming out of the board. So here I have a CH3 group. That's going to be kind of in the way. So instead of going this route, it's probably going to want to go after a hydrogen. Maybe that's over here, right? It's going to go through our E2 reaction, right? So remember our E2 reactions. And then when it grabs the H, it's going to form the double bond and kick out my BR group. So what do you think our final answer is going to look like? Well, I'll go ahead and draw it in. This CH3 was untouched. This BR was kicked out. And I'm left with a double bond right here. All right. So let's go ahead and move on to our next problem. Very similar idea, but in this case, we don't have a big bulky base. It's just an O with two carbons. And I'm negatively charged. So this brings up the idea of something called anti-periplanar. So when I grab a hydrogen, I want my hydrogen to be 180 degrees from my leaving group. So if my leaving group is coming out of the board, I need to go find an H that's going into the board. So if I look here, I have an H right here. This is the CH3. And then over here, I have an H. And I also have another H right here. So I'm going to label these A, B, and C. Which hydrogen do you think we're going to be going after? Well, we can't go after C because I see that H, C, and B, R are coming the same way. So there's too much steric hindrance for this group to come in and attack it. So we can't go for C. And then same thing here at A. We're not going to be able to go for A. So we're left with B. So then our oxygen grabs B, forms the double bond, and kicks out the leaving group. So then you're left with our final answer, where our CH3 is also untouched, and my double bond formation is up there. Okay, and our BR was kicked out. Let's go ahead and finish this up with one more example. So same idea, I have my negatively charged oxygen. Here's my negatively charged oxygen. I'm looking for an anti-periplanar hydrogen. So I see right here, I have an H, and I also have one right here. So how do I know if I'm going to go for HA or HB? Because they're both anti-periplanar to the BR group. What do you guys think? Well, if I went after A, I would form a double bond right here, but that would not give me as, a, as much of a substituted uh, alkene as if I were to form a double bond here. So I'll go ahead and draw what they would both look like. So if I went for HA, HA would go here, double bond, BR gets kicked out. Or I could have gone for B. And if I went for B, I'd grab my hydrogen, form my double bond, and then kick out my BR. So then I would have had a double bond here, and my CH3 group would be here versus right here. So if I had to choose between A and B, B is going to be my final answer, because B, you can see here, it's tri-substituted, versus here, it's only di-substituted. So you want to make sure that your alkene formation gives you the most substituted alkene possible, OK? So that's everything for today, guys. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.